For the functions f of x equals x squared plus 1, g of x equals root x, and h of x equals 1 on x, determine whether the following compositions are defined or undefined. If the composite function exists, identify its domain. Part A. f of g of x. To determine if f of g of x exists, you first need to check whether the range of the inner function is equal to or a subset of the domain of the outer function. To do this, you need to draw a table and write down the domain and range of each of the functions. f of x is a parabola shifted one unit up. Doing a quick sketch of f of x, the domain of f is going to be all real numbers, and the range of f is going to be from 1 to infinity. And so writing this in the table, the domain of f is going to be all real numbers, and the range is going to be from 1 to infinity. g of x is a square root function. Sketching g of x, the domain of g is going to be from 0 to infinity, and the range is also going to be from 0 to infinity. And so writing this in the table, the domain of g is from 0 to infinity, and the range of g is also from 0 to infinity. From here, we can see that the range of the inner function, which is g of x, is a subset of the domain of the outer function, which is f of x. And so this means this composite function exists. If you're not sure whether the range of the inner function is a subset of the domain of the outer function, you can draw a number line and check. The domain of f is all real numbers, and the range of g is from 0 to infinity. From this number line, we can see that the range of g intersects with the domain of f, which means the range of g is a subset of the domain of f. And so we can write this as the range of the inner function, which is g of x, is a subset of the domain of the outer function, which is f of x. And so therefore, f of g of x exists. To find the rule of f of g of x, this is going to be f of root x. And now wherever there is an x in the function f of x, we replace it with root x. And so this is going to be root x squared plus 1, which is simplified to x plus 1. The domain of this composite function is then going to be the domain of the inner function. The domain of the inner function is from 0 to infinity. And so the domain of f of g of x is going to be from 0 to infinity. Part b. g of f of x. To determine if g of f of x exists, you need to check whether the range of the inner function, this time it's f of x, is equal to or a subset of the domain of the outer function, which this time is the function g. We already had this information from part a of this question, and so reading from the table, we can see that the range of the inner function, which is f of x, is a subset of the domain of the outer function, g of x. And so this means the composite function g of f of x is defined or it exists. And so we can write this as the range of the inner function, which is f, is a subset of the domain of the outer function, which is g. And so therefore, g of f of x exists. The question doesn't ask to find the rule of the composite functions. But for the purpose of this video, we will find them. And so, g of f of x can be written as g of x squared plus 1. And so, wherever there's an x in the function g of x, we'll replace it with x squared plus 1. And so, this is going to be the square root of x squared plus 1. The domain of this composite function is then going to be the domain of the inner function, which is the function f. And so the domain is going to be all real numbers. Part C. H of g of x. To determine if h of g of x is defined, again, you need to check whether the range of the inner function, this time it's the function g, is equal to or a subset of the domain of the outer function, which this time is the function h. We already found the domain and range of the function g from part A of this question. And so, 
we need to find the domain and range of h of x. h of x is a hyperbola. Sketching this, the domain of h is all real numbers except for 0, and the range is also all real numbers except for 0. And so writing this in the table, the domain is all real numbers except for 0, and the range is also all real numbers except for 0. And so reading from the table, we can see that the range of the inner function, which is g of x, is not a subset of the domain of the outer function h of x. And so this means the composite function h of g of x is not defined or does not exist. Drawing a number line, we can see this. The domain of h is all real numbers except for 0, and the range of g is from 0 to infinity. The range of g is not a subset of the domain of h because 0 is included in the range of g but it's not included in the domain of h. And so we write this as the range of the inner function, which is g, is not a subset of the domain of the outer function, which is h. And so therefore, the composite function h of g of x does not exist, or it's not defined. Part D, h of f of x. Just like before, to determine if h of f of x exists, you need to check whether the range of the inner function, this time it's the function f, is equal to or a subset of the domain of the outer function, which this time is the function h. We already found the range and domain of these functions from the previous parts of this question. And so reading from the table, we can see that the range of the inner function, f of x, is a subset of the domain of the outer function, h of x. And so this means the composite function h of f of x is defined, or it does exist. Drawing a number line, we can double check this. The domain of h is all real numbers except for 0, and the range of f is from 1 to infinity. And so we can write this as the range of the inner function f is a subset of the domain of the outer function h. And so therefore, h of f of x exists, or it's defined. Finding the rule of h of f of x. This can be written as h of x squared plus 1. And so wherever we have an x in the function h of x, we replace it with x squared plus 1. And so this is going to be 1 on x squared plus 1. The domain of this composite function is going to be the domain of the inner function. And so this is going to have the domain of all real numbers, since the domain of the inner function f is all real numbers. And that's it for this video. In the next video, I'll go through some examples of how you can restrict the domain of a function in order to make the composite function defined.